going to look at the practical procedure of male urinary catheterization. This involves passing a catheter, a thin tube, into the bladder to facilitate drainage of the urine. And once it's there, normally it's left there for some hours, days, weeks or, or even months. So the very basis of the procedure is that the urethra is here and the bladder in the pelvis. Very basically. A catheter is introduced through the urethra with a drainage port on the end to allow the urine out. To prevent the, urine, the catheter from running back out, we blow a balloon up that sits at the neck of the bladder here, therefore retaining the catheter in. If the catheter tries to fall out, the balloon will prevent it. Urine from the bladder can then drain through this tube and out freely. That is the principle of catheterization. Now this is a fairly, uh, well it's not invasive in the sense that it involves uh, opening any tissues or anything, but it's, a, it's a not the sort of thing you want to do lightly. So let's think about the indications for male urinary catheterization. When would you want to carry this procedure out? So what are the indications? <clears throat> well, when it's necessary to facilitate artificial flow over the control of urine, because that's what it will do. It will let urine flow out when normally it wouldn't. For example, this might be to ensure urine drainage. If there's obstruction to the flow of urine and the person is unable to pass urine without the aid of a catheter, then catheterization will clearly be indicated. In men, for example, a common problem is uh, prostatic enlargement. Pressing on the urethra, possibly preventing normal voiding of the bladder. So to ensure urine drainage. Sometimes though, there's no physical problem with the flow of urine, but it's necessary to accurately record the amount of urine that's being produced. For example, in a patient who is shocked, the perfusion of the kidneys will be reduced, therefore the amount of urine produced will also be reduced. And if this drops to less than 30 mL an hour, this is actually classified as an acute renal failure. And if that state of affairs continues, it can result in permanent renal damage and renal failure via the mechanism of acute tubular necrosis. So in managing a critically ill patient, it's important to ensure that they are passing 30 mL of urine per hour. Sometimes drugs may be introduced into the bladder via a catheter. So if you want to put something into the bladder, without it going through the kidneys and the ureters, catheterization is a way of doing that. To relieve retention of urine, whatever the cause of that retention of urine. Now unfortunately, catheterization is often practiced to manage incontinence. Now with some patients, catheters so some catheterized patients, it works very well as a management uh, strategy. Others, it's disastrous and just causes lots and lots of complications, like infection, for example. So what we say is that, yes, catheterization can be used to manage incontinence, but only as a last resort after other strategies have been attempted. So there are some possible indications for male urinary catheterization.
Let's think now about the type of catheters we can use. Well, plastic catheters tend to be very rigid and very wide, and they're only used post-operatively and will be passed by surgeons in theatre when the patient is anaesthetised. So for our purposes, where we're talking about ward nurse-based catheterisation, plastic catheters can be ignored. Coated latex catheters can be kept in for 2 to 12 weeks, depending on the type of coating, when longer term catheterisation is required. Pure silicon and silicon coated catheters can be left in for longer, two months, maybe even three months between recatheterization. So let's look at a few uh, catheters I've got here now. Now, the first thing I want to show you <coughs> is the lumen inside the catheter. Now, what we have is an ordinary catheter here, but it's been uh, chopped off. And here's a cross section I want to show you. of the catheter tube. That's fine, see that quite clearly there. Now you can see a fairly large lumen in the middle, a fairly large hole. That is to allow the urine to exit. But I think you can fairly clearly see there at the top a smaller hole. This smaller hole is for the water to inject into the balloon to blow the balloon up. So the large lumen for the urine to run out of the small hole connecting the filling port at the bottom with the balloon actually in the catheter. And this sort of catheter, let's look at a few sorts. This sort is the uh, latex sort. Um, for short term use. This is where the uh, urine will drain out of. And this is the injection port here for injecting the water into. So the pure latex type, short term use. Longer term use, I don't know if you can see the end of this again here, if we can focus on that. Mm, can't see that too clearly. But actually I think you, you might be able to see that there's two layers in that. This is a silicon coated latex catheter which can be left in for longer. But this one, if we look at the end of that, I think you can see there's only one material here. This is the uh, pure silicone type. So the pure silicone type of catheter can be left in for uh, quite a lot longer. The pure silicone type. And this one is a pure silicone one for females. You can see it's quite a lot shorter because of the shorter uh, urethra in females. Now very often you do see females catheterised with male catheters. It's not strictly correct, they should have female catheters. Of course what you could never do is catheterise a man with a female catheter, that would be a very dangerous thing to attempt for reasons we'll see shortly. So different sorts of catheters depending primarily on how long you want it to stay in the patient for. Let's think now about catheter size. What size do you want the catheter to be? The size measures the diameter. And the thinking here is to start off as small as possible with a size 12 or 14, as small as possible for a first catheterization, only using larger diameters as they become indicated for specific reasons. The larger diameter catheters, the 18 and the 20 or even the 22s, should only be used in the case of hematuria because the larger diameter is less likely to clot if there's a lot of blood in the urine. <clears throat> so keep the larger diameters for patients with hematuria.